I messed up was the words that I said to my son when he saw me failed recently. Made a, a really bad, not so good decision for myself. And I failed and I failed in front of him. And it was the most humbling thing I think I could have done in front of him was to allow him to see his mother at her weakest state of being. I think too many times we as mothers, single mothers, and I haven't been a single mother my whole life. I've been married twice, but we, during the time when I was single, we as single moms, we, we play this superhero role that's unrealistic. And we show our kids a not so good view of reality. And so even though we're going through it, I mean, we're really going through the trenches they, we get we hide it and we mask it and they don't see the reality of our being and they don't see the humanity of us. They see us as superhumans and we're not superhuman. And that's why sometimes we raise them in an, um, a dishonest light. This is Marion with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I wanted to start off that that way to let you guys know what this, this, this video was about. I'm making a video and not a reel because I wanted to be way more detailed uh with the video and, and that a video allows me to do so if you haven't done so already click and subscribe follow whatever you got to do share my video so that it can get out to more people my i'm this channel restoring ghettos forgotten is meant to encourage and empower our culture to a healthier state of being by the telling of my testimony and by the telling of different analogies that could possibly open up our minds so that we can ultimately change our lives. That's what this channel is about. So I do expose a lot of my personal life and I, um, and I don't care because God has called me. I have a purpose and I am trying my best to complete that purpose. So I'll just go on uh, to the topic. Ladies, we're way more worthy. We're way more worthy than the world like to tell us. And this is going out to the single moms. This is going out to the single moms. I wish to encourage you on this morning that if you stay the course, you are a winner. That's what this video is about. If you stay the course because you didn't have to, then you're a winner. But I also want to go back to showing your children the reality of what a single mom goes through is going to help them a lot more than hiding everything. So that's why I said, I just recently exposed, it was possibly last year, I believe it was last year. But I went through something, I didn't make the best decision and I went through something and he saw me in my most vulnerable state. He saw me in my humanity and I don't like the curse, but I was going through something and he knew I was going through something. My kids know me, they know my energy, they know if I mostly try to be positive and, and I'm upbeat, but if they can sense something about me that isn't stabilized or normal, they know I'm going through something. And I just admitted it. I'm like, son, I messed up. But I said the other word. I said, I messed up because for some reason, I can't get this right. I can't get it right. And I think he needed to see that vulnerability and he needed to see that I'm not super mom. I go through things, women go through things just like everybody else and we need some type of grace. We need to give ourselves grace, of course, but sometimes we need to let our kids see us in this space because a lot of time, more times than not, we are a single moms because we're not choosing or allowing the right men to choose us. So in the midst of that reality, the reason why we're single moms, we need to deal with that. We need to deal with the fact that perhaps we are not capable of picking the right partners. And it's going to affect our quality of life in every way imaginable, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and maybe even financially, if we pick the wrong mate. So this is me saying, be your vulnerable self, be your messed up self around your children sometimes to so let them see that there is you there's a humanity there's a um a human condition in you that may need healing 
So therefore, I'm not perfect. I need you to have a little grace. Pray for me sometimes. Sometimes we need to ask our kids to pray for us because we can't do it all. We're not, it's, it's, it's really unnatural for a woman to raise children alone. And so I said all that. I'm starting off with how I wanted my son to see me because I think that I had failed him in that aspect or I failed my other children in that aspect because I was always uh, the grinder, the provider. Uh, I tried to be so many things, multidimensional, that you can also lose yourself in motherhood as well. You can lose the fact that there are some things that you need, uh, some relaxation time, some time away, some time off so that you can regroup mentally and spiritually connect with your maker a little bit more instead of just grinding, 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 grinding. I'm talking about working two, three jobs for over 20 something years, maybe off and on, uh, you know, as I, cause I've been married twice. So as I was married, maybe not so much. And then, uh, then as I wasn't, maybe, you know, I would pick back up and then I would go back down and, but it, it has, it hasn't been totally consistently, but it's been enough to be very draining so i'm saying all of that because i think sometimes we lose our own humanity by trying to pretend that we got it when, when in actuality we don't always have it all the time we need to let our children see that we need to sh us give ourselves a little bit more grace we need to show the our humanity that hey we actually do need a little bit of help and i'm not blaming anybody at this point you know, so what? We made some, we, we did the best that we could with what God gave us. God gave us our parents. So there's a lot of, like, if you come from a, a dysfunctional lifestyle, if you come from uh, parents that, that had any type of uh, ailments or addictions or afflictions, and you were, and you, you experienced trauma, you're not going to be normal for the rest of your life. I'm telling you that now you'll never be a normal human being, but that's okay because God can use us. He can use us broken people. He can use us because he's a great healer and he will heal us. If we admit where we're broken, I'm that person. I'm like, I over here, I'm broken. I need a little help. I overexposed myself, but God told me to. But that's why, when he can come in and heal those different layers of dysfunction and get us better and better than we've ever been. So I'm, I'm, exp I'm saying all of this to say that sometimes you have to admit where you're effed up at. Sometimes you have to admit, man, I'm effed up. I, I, I'm trying to get this thing right, but apparently I'm not. So I need God's help. I need the people around me help. I need prayer myself because we spend so much time toiling and tilling the soil, I mean, providing and doing this extra work because there's an absentee parent that we forget that we're human and we forget that we do need help. So it's okay for us to need help, but in the midst of our humanity, I want us to always celebrate ourselves. So no matter how down you get, ladies, and, and, and where you may possibly feel like you failed your children or you've even failed yourself, you have to give yourself some type of grace and you have to allow yourself to be human. And as long as you fix the issues of your heart, your human condition, you allow God to come in and change those different layers, you're going to be okay. One thing that helped me, but it had to hurt me first, was that I just lost, I've lost so many people this year. This year has been definitely a year of challenge. It's been very challenging, but I've lost three important people in my life this year alone. And the last one was really hard for me because he was um, like, he's like a son to me. His name is Nick. His name was Nick and he was a beautiful spirited young man and he, he lived with me and my family. Even I was a single mom at the time when I took on that responsibility. But him and his mom him and his mom, uh, we tr you know, would trade out and care for our sons together because we were trying to keep them in a half decent school district. When I initially purchased my house, I got my house built in the northwest Houston area. Uh it was new and it was up and coming. I never knew the influx of of what type of neighborhood it was going to turn into so it really kind of messed the school district up in a sense 
And my son came to me, James, my oldest son came to me and said, mom, I really don't want to graduate from this school. They don't care about education. They don't care about graduating. All they care about is what they have on or what they have and all that. So he came to me and he said that to me. I said, wow, I got to get him out of school then. So my friend Lisa lived in the area of the school that he wanted to attend and she allowed him to come over and attend over there for a while and then they came back to where i was but i was still commuting them to the school so we were helping each other out with our sons so that they could get at least a half decent education my son graduated from that high school so and 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 nick did as well um well no nick i believe nick left before he graduated his mom had to take him back somewhere. But uh, I said all this to say was that we shared in the parentage of our sons together. And it was, it was, uh, it was just like he was a son. It wasn't like it was a bother. It wasn't like it was a hardship. It was a responsibility, but I loved it. And I loved him and I'm going to miss him greatly. Um, I said all that to say, because sometimes, you know, we just us mothers we don't know how to stop being mothers and and we just take on all of this responsibility because it's just like our nurturing spirit it's just us having that mothery mothery nature and it's it's, it's okay for us to have it but it's also okay for us to, to um, understand when we need help and that was a time where she needed help from me and I needed help from her and we helped each other so I'll never forget that but I said out that to say, ladies, it's okay to be in our humanity. It's okay for us not to be okay. It's okay for us not to have it all figured out. It's okay. As long as we admit to our maker, our God, where we are, he can help heal us. And we also need to let our children see that so that they don't get this idealism that it's easier than it really was. <laughs> because we all know there was some times where we wanted to throw in the towel. But if we would have thrown in the towel, our kids would have been lost because the fathers are, uh, some of the fathers are non-existent. That's why this video is for single mothers. It's not for women. And, you, and, and what I say about single mothers, I like to say you're not a single mother if you have an active father playing that role not necessarily as your mate but going to the practices taking them to the practices taking them to the doctor picking them up for, from school keeping them on the weekends keeping them at different times of the year then you're not really a single mother because i think sometimes we we misconstrue that part i'm talking about women that don't have they have zero support from the absentee parent that's this video is going out to them if it helps people that are co-parenting that's fine too but what i'm talking about is the women that did not have any assistance from the father that worked from the time that child was gone uh born to the child that that from the time that child graduated from college high school college whatever you've had to do that alone your whole time then that's what this video this video is going out to you to understand that it's okay to be in your humanity it's okay for you to need help go and get you some help while i was raising my children i was going in and out of counseling i was doing my work i was praying i was purging but with all the trauma that i experienced as a child i needed a little extra help and i may still need to counsel i i've always a work in progress i try to work on myself so that i can be the best version of myself so that when i touch people i do not injure them so i ask for every woman every single mother that's out there recognize in your life where you were your own poison where you keep making the same decision and you keep getting hurt repeatedly in that area that's an area that is unhealed and that's an area we need to focus on so more or less i always want to encourage us but i also want to give you some meat and potatoes to let you know you guys we, there still may be some healing that we need to incur and it needs to happen in our lives so that we can be better people uh to the people around us and including ourselves because sometimes it could be this one erroneous thought or the subconscious thought that we have all the time that's making us make the same decision over and over again and i won't even make uh, um I won't even say the decision. It could be anything, anything that's detrimental to your success and well-being that's hurting you, that you keep doing. It's an issue and it needs to be dealt with. So 
that's my meat and potatoes for now. I want to go back to celebrating us now. So I mentioned Nick because the loss of Nick, this beautiful, this this young man, I had no issues with him. I never had to pull him aside. I never had to to discipline him, nothing. He was a beautiful, wonderful spirited young man. He just passed away. He's only 33. It's a tragedy uh, that he's gone so soon. Uh, but I think the kind of young man, so his mother did a wonderful job with him. And I tried to continue that while I had um, responsibility of him. But I'm thinking about it. Uh, the reason why I thought about him is because I pulled out my photo album and I wanted to see like the pictures that we had with him and all the good memories that we had. And that's why to this day, uh, people may call me a dinosaur, but if I take pictures that now I'm not going to print out every picture, but when there was special moments like birthdays, holidays, uh, or just something good happening that we needed to remember i took pictures and i print i still print them out but i went through my photo album and i went through my photo album to find the picture so that i can make some type of memorial for him and perhaps you know to uh celebrate his life a little on my own uh but i also with me looking for those pictures i was able to find uh some of the old pictures so okay i'm gonna tell my age you guys now i've been tell my age because i've been a mother for over 33 years 33 years no actually because my daughter was born in 1988 her name is Manarina. but she was born in 1988 I, uh, I was pregnant in 1987 but I had her in 88 so I had made 18 but I was pregnant at 17 so I've been a mother for almost what 35 36 years that's over half my life over half my life okay so uh i was able to see the pictures that i've had i have all of her all of her uh report cards all of her pictures you know from her uh, all my children from that long all the way up until now to my youngest is 17 now he's about to graduate y'all pray for me because this boy is getting on my last nerves i'm trying to keep him on the right track and i'm doing it by myself and it's not that easy so y'all say a prayer for me with with him but he's he's all he also has a story god got a story for him he, he has a purpose and i'll go on to that later but from the the period where i had her all her pictures all of her elementary pictures all of her awards and plaques and the girl was brilliant she got a presidential award i always saw her as a a lawyer doctor attorney or a judge or something big because that's how brilliant she really is and so life happens which i'm still very proud of her because she chose her own way that's her decision that's her will but i said all that because i saw all these pictures but it, me looking at all these pictures because sometimes you get a little down with your current situation and your circumstances and you sometimes you're a little harder on yourself than you need to be and so i start feeling like man you know maybe i didn't do the best i could by my children because of some of the life decisions and choices that they've decided to make as adults and um, that was God's way to make me think to go to my photo albums to find Nick's picture so that I can go and take a retrospective look at my life and all the sacrifices that I've done for my children that I was always there in other words he was saying you all you never left you were always present you always sacrificed your own needs you always did what you needed to do for your children hold your head up that's what he did when I looked at all of those pictures even when I was married but I looked at the pictures and I looked at how well I took care of my children and most of those pictures that I took most of them we were in church my i raised all my children in church all my children have been baptized they know the lord so i have to know that one day if any of them decide to go left to the left they're going to return back to god because that's how i raised them so i see all these pictures of them in church and celebrating and us going to church and us going out to eat after church and us and god showed me all the sacrifices when i was working all these jobs and and going to school while i was working and 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 i really didn't care about myself very much like i did very little for myself at the times and um and, and so god was like no no 
I will not let you feel like you are a failure because you gave so much of yourself up to stay the course. That's what this video is about. It's about single moms. I don't care how bad you feel at this moment. This is God speaking through me to you that you are far more valuable than rubies. You are a wonderful God-fearing, strong, independent woman, despite of what the world does, despite of what the world says to you, that you don't have any value. I'm here to tell you that you are very valuable because you're a woman of God, because God loves you. And if I'm speaking to any sister that don't know God, you have to get to know your maker for yourself. And that way, he will let you know what your worth is. He will let you know what you deserve and what you don't deserve. And you'll start to love yourself more if you're in that space. Because I'm not saying that all single mothers are broken. And I'm not saying that all single mothers have experienced trauma. But it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a healthier, if you're at a healthier state of being, we all go through ups and downs. And sometimes we get a little hard on ourselves when we think we failed our children. And I'm telling you now, as long as you stayed the course and you've protected them to the best of your ability, you've provided for them to the best of your ability. I don't care if you're in a project. I don't care if you're in Section 8. You work your ass off every day to do the best you can by your kids to provide and protect your children and you love them. You're not abusing them then you are somebody special and you are valuable and you need to hold your head up because I'm proud of you and God is proud of you too. Yes, we did not make the right decisions in men because men love to throw that over our head. Other men that's on the outside, they probably ain't taking care of their kids either. But then they always saying you got it hard because you picked the wrong man. Perhaps you're the wrong man too. Why aren't you with your kid's mother? Why aren't you helping her? Some people can't cohabitate some people can't get married because all they had together was sex so it doesn't necessarily work out between the mother and the father but you don't have to vacate your responsibility and just because we're doing it alone ladies that's that's more than enough for you to celebrate yourself that's what this video is about sometimes you have to pull out those old photo albums and for all the single moms that are young start taking pictures and printing them out because then you get to go back and see your growth if you've grown any. And you can tell by the pictures, your facial expressions in the pictures, what you had on in the pictures, what you celebrated in the pictures will tell you if you've had any growth. And if you can see growth, then that's encouraging. It encouraged me to go back, even though I was crying as I was looking at these pictures of this beautiful young man that feels like a son to me that's gone at 33. I was able to encourage myself because I'm also dealing with something else. And it was trying to make me feel like I'm maybe I'm not a good mother or maybe I'm not doing enough. But I've done the best that I could when I've given my all, when I didn't have anything myself. That was God's way of encouraging me. So as I'm looking through these pictures, I'm crying. And I'm like, wow, you didn't do a bad job. I'm seeing the, the sacrifices I made, like, when my daughter Paris, she's now in college, I seen that there was a, a couple years where I put her through private school and it wasn't easy financially, but I did that because I wanted her to have a better opportunity or to, for, to bring her GPA up and so she can get into any college she wanted to. I was trying to elevate her and I did that. I saw those pictures of her in private school uh, a single black mother was able to eventually put one of her children through private school. And even the ones that I, I had in regular school, I still was maintaining by uh, talk, going to the schools and talking to the teachers and still working hard two and three jobs. I had somebody tell me one time I was working an overnight job. So I had like an administrative assistant position during the day. And then I had to work overnight and I, then I was doing like real estate part time. So I'm, I'm always been a mother to work two and three different areas because the, the father wasn't active. And so, you know, I used to do all that and I, I saw pictures of that and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't you dare be down on yourself because you stayed the course and you did what you had to do for your children you are a success story. I got onto my back, I tattooed on my back. 
I only have two tattoos. <laughs> one is I have one on my leg and one on my back. But on my back, it says, I am a success story, a living testimony. I may have forgotten another word that I have on there, but it's small and it's in script. And I said, that's what I need to remind myself that I am a success story coming from where I come from, from all the traumas and all the dysfunction and all those things. And I'm steady a work in progress. And I, but I have to remind myself that yet and still, I'm still a success story. And this is my message to you women out there, even the younger mothers that's younger than me. You, as long as you stay the course, as long as you do your work, as long as you continue on your path, don't give up. Because this world will tell you you're worthless. This world will tell you you're nothing. You made the wrong choice in men. You're this. You're that. No, ma'am. You are four. God wanted me to tell tell you that you are four more valuable. You're more valuable than rubies. You are. And the world will try to tell you you're not. But you you are the incubator, incubator of this life. You're able to create something beautiful in your womb alone that makes you valuable don't you dare think you're an unworthy or unvaluable you are a beautiful human life force that's enough to celebrate yourself so you pick your head up i don't care what you feeling this morning i don't care what you feeling this evening or what you felt yesterday i'm here to remind you that there is hope every day you wake up in the morning you have gratitude you're in your right mind Every day you have life. God has provided for you. For you, he's providing a way for you and your children. I don't care what it may look like. As long as you have life, you get up and say, thank you, God, for this life. Then it's up to you to believe God to give, to grant you the promises. Because he's made promises to you. Regardless of what they, they are, they could be personal. But he's told you some things that he's going to do for you. He's going to do them. You just have to believe and stay the course and i want you to know how special you are now i'm saying that to single moms i'm saying it but i want you to know there's an accountability with your gifts with the fact that you are an incubator with the fact that you are a life bringer that's a gift from god but you are you got to protect that life too you got to protect the your self your well-being don't cast your pearls before swine you wait on the right man before you procreate the next time. And I'm telling you that because we can't keep creating this hardship for ourselves either. So I want us to be accountable and responsible. I want us to make sure we slow down because I know sometimes it gets hard and it's like all you're doing is you're going to work, you're going to school, you're taking care of your kids, you're a single mom. And then so you start, oh, I kind of feel like I need the companionship of a male. I kind of feel like I need... Still, I don't care what kind of things you going on in your mind because I know how it gets. Slow down long enough to get to know these men to make sure they are worth your pearls. Do not cast your pearls before swine. So I want to say that. I want to make sure I say that. Take your time to get to know these men to see if they're valuable because you may have a slip up. You don't want to keep procreating with men that are going to be absentee fathers because you're going to keep creating hardship for you and your children. And so we, we have to stop that. I said that to say because there are some situations that are beyond our control. Some women actually get married to these men and they're not going to be there for the long haul. And then you're still going to have that hardship if they decide to walk away and not help at all. So it's kind of iffy to say, even if you think you're making the best decision, you can still you can still not actually make the basis. You can get married and have these children and the man walks away and then that creates hardship. So it's really not a fail safe because you're gonna always have to take risk on love and relationship, but just make sure you, like at the beginning, you really pay attention to the red flags because people will show you their red flags. Once you see those red flags, and I will say addiction, is one red flag you should not bypass. You cannot love an addicted person, regardless of what they're addicted to. They can be addicted to marijuana. They can be addicted to alcohol. They can be addicted to pornography. They can be addicted to so many different things. Once you realize they're addicted, prayerfully you've protected yourself up into this part so you don't get a child out of this addiction. That causes something totally different, spiritually and genetically. When you procreate with someone that has an addiction, it will alter their DNA 
and it can genetically predispose them to that addiction. Don't believe me, do your research. So you don't wanna procreate with anyone that has an addiction because you will somehow unknowingly pass that trait on to your child. Ask me how I know. So you don't wanna do that. That's why this is me. I want to celebrate us, but I'm also gonna give us some meat and potatoes, something we can eat and take with us and think. When we change our minds and our thoughts, systems and our structures, we can change our lives. I am a living witness on that. We can change our lives. So I wanna say that. I wanna say that we are responsible for our pearls, ladies. Be careful who you cast. Do not cast your pearls before swine because they will devour your pearls and they will literally, physically, in any, ma any manner you can think of, destroy you as a woman. And then you'll have to come back up. You can be, God can have you up here. You meet somebody that's in an addictive state of being, it can bring you back down. And then you gotta heal yourself. And you got to bring yourself back up here. And that's the hardest thing in the world. When God has already brought you up here and somebody bring you back down, it's the hardest thing in the world to get back up there. So that's why I want us to take our time, love ourselves, celebrate ourselves, understand how special we are, because that's what this message is about. God wants me to tell you that even though you didn't make the best decision, you're still valuable. And don't let nobody tell you any different. Any Kevin Samuels followers do not... Those men don't even make good mates. Don't follow. Don't allow, don't don't allow yourself in any of their companies because all they they most of them are narcissistic and all they're going to do is tell you how unvaluable you are. So, stay away from those men. Take your time when you need when you need to balance yourself out cuz I was always this person that was always in the gym. Even when I was single, I was always in the gym. I always had that problem not a big problem with my weight but my weight shifted and when i got married i got really big uh but i, I always have to make sure because i'm so short and i'm muscular and so i'm kind of you know i have to make sure i'm balancing myself out so i always got to stay in the gym but one thing about the gym when i was single and i was living because i abstained in, in the different parts of my singlehood i was abstaining from sex sometimes and it's i'm a very sexual person but to help me with those cravings this is going out to the single moms i would work out and that would release the energy that i had built up any sex sexual energy or any other but it could be bad energy that i built up i release it in the gym so i'm encouraging you to get a, a membership to the gym not to meet other people but to keep your energy balanced to balance your energy to keep your hormones in check and your, your energy balance join a gym when you feel like you're over you know you got all this sexual energy pent up you don't want to go cast your pearls before swine so find creative ways to keep yourself until you meet the right person to be able to give yourself to so i want to encourage us women because we don't have a lot of that we have a lot of people telling us how bad we are and how um uh, how we're not valuable or worthy of healthy, whole love and commitment. And we are worthy uh, because with us, with, with the way the world talks about all the single moms, well, there's got to be some men procreating with these single moms. We're, we're just as accountable. We should be held just as accountable as the women. So there are men procreating with women that are running away. This goes way back to slavery. I mean, a lot of times, that's why I say we need to put the phones down sometimes and start reading and studying our history because until we know where we came from, we won't know where we're headed. But a lot of the detachment that happens with the black man, and I'm talking about the black man, comes genetically, they're predisposed to abandonment issues because in slavery, they weren't able to stay with their first wives the, like the first wives that they procreated with they weren't able to stay there because the slave master would take them and sell them off to another plantation so they could procreate because our genetics are so powerful and strong as african-american people do your research we were so strong athletically and they could do so much uh in slavery that they would sell them off to different plantations so they were procreating with all these women that they could not stay to be there for their children they had to keep doing that that was handed down to our men we need to study and show ourselves approved so we can know why some of these men abandoned their children 
it was all planned it's all a part of a plan and then you have these other races looking at our men and they're pointing their finger at them and they're shaking their heads and they're treating them like trash but you program this in their heads way back from slavery that's why a lot of these younger men don't understand why they get one girl pregnant it's in my book i wrote it in my book uh ghetto's forgotten daughters about how the baby mama and the baby daddy syndrome how it came from slavery that's where it came from we need to really get into our books and study our history so we'll know why these men are abandoning us this was from slavery this was handed down from slavery but it's time for it to be stopped and when you know that you have a problem with staying with your child's mother you want to go if you don't want to have any kids go get clipped if you don't want to impregnate anybody because your mind is messed up or you you feel like you can't stay with one woman don't have any children that's a what is that called a low functioning behavior and it came from slavery they don't even know why they're doing it and, and then some of them say they actually want more they got 12 kids and they want more from different women that is a generational curse we have to break those curses we have the power to but first we have to recognize where it came from where is the source now I'm getting a little too deep. I want to get out of that. But I, I really think we need to understand why some men can't stay in the home. It's a reason why. And it's a reason why there's so many black single women. But it's our responsibility to protect ourselves so that we don't have our quality of life affected because we're trying to rear and raise these children alone. So I wanted to say that. But I said all that to say... Um... um a lot of people say well how can you how can you say that when you've made so many mistakes but that's the reason why i can say it and I, what i will say is that my son uh, my youngest son is 17. my youngest son is a miracle child my youngest son came after i had sterilization surgery so i know that he has purpose but not everybody that has child after child <laughs> you know planned on it like just being stupid or ignorant not every woman that gets pregnant not every woman that happens to a lot of us actually try to be responsible but on the other end we had a mate that was maliciously doing stuff to make sure that person got pregnant um and this happens in real everyday life that's why i say ladies you got to make sure you understand who you are connecting yourselves with because there are some really dark spirits out there that will do stuff like that but with my last child i had actually tried to be responsible and had that surgery so that i wouldn't end up supporting and taking care of all of these children alone please uh forgive any background i'm outside of uh, my apartments making this video but um uh, i wanted to say that to say not every woman is irresponsible sometimes women get pregnant and it's due to no um excuse me is due to it's not necessarily due to their um irresponsibility it's just something that may have been planned without them knowing uh like men go as far as poking holes in the condoms ladies so i want to make sure you know that if you're dealing with somebody you first of all you don't need to be dealing with someone that you can't trust but if you find that hey we're using we use the condom and I still got pregnant. That guy is poking holes in the condoms. He is not to be trusted. You need to leave him alone. You need to leave him alone. Things like this happen. So I'm, I'm out here trying to tell the world that not every woman that has two and three kids is irresponsible. What she is irresponsible with is her body and letting the wrong people around her. I will say that, but not necessarily that she was just this fool, this opening herself up to all of these kids that she is struggling to take care of so i want to mention that there's different ways that men can get women pregnant knowingly they'll they're doing it because they want to hold that woman back because they have a very dark evil spirit especially if they know they're not going to be there to help support the child but i said all that because there's other reasons why people get pregnant now even with my my last son which is my miracles i call him my miracle son he came after i had sterilization surgery so i know he was meant purposely meant to be here that he has purpose he has great purpose he is a beautiful young man and i always tell him you're here for a reason don't let anybody tell you you're not and that's why his challenges may be a little bit harder because there's something god wants him to do for him and 
until he does it, he's going to go through these situations and circumstances because God has a higher calling for him and he's going to have to answer that call to get to where God wants him to be because there's something great that I feel is about him and I felt it since he was conceived in my womb. I felt that it's a purpose beyond what he knows right now. And the enemy often tries to lie to our children to tell them that they're worthless because their fathers are not around. To tell them that they have to actually follow in their father's footsteps because their fathers are not around. And I tell you now that that's a lie from Satan. That's a lie from the devil. We are not our parents' decisions. We are not our parents addictions or afflictions god is the ruler of all things he can heal whomever wants healing ask me how i know we don't have to be alcoholics we don't have to be drug users we don't have to be caught up in debauchery we can be set free because god is a he's a a god of second chances sometimes third and fourth chances but he's a god a healing god and he can heal us from any addiction or affliction or any soul tie or any trauma that was handed down he can heal us all from that we can be separated from that but we have to ask god to do it it's free will he's not gonna come in and heal nobody that don't ask for healing so we can heal from that and this message is going a little deeper than i had anticipated on but i merely i wanted to speak to the single moms but this may be speaking to the children too that you are somebody special just because your dad ain't there it don't mean that you that god does not love you god loves you it's just that absence parent is is also missing something there's something that's missing inside of them that they can't see that their own seed needs them that they can't see that their own seed needed that covering and that protection and that masculine energy to carry them throughout life. They can't, they don't have what it takes. You have to sometimes come into acceptance that that person, even when there's absentee mothers, there's something within them, <coughs> excuse me, that they did not have. That's why they can't give it to you. You then have to take that, ex uh, that knowledge of that, accept it for what it is, forgive them, forgive yourself for self-destructive behavior just simply because that parent is not here. Forgive yourself for that and ask God to heal you, even in areas you don't even know that you need healing in. Lord, I don't know why I'm the way that I'm, I, I am. Help me with that. Help me understand. I say that a lot because there's layers to traumas there's an and abandonment is a trauma people don't like to believe it but if your mother and father is not there they've never been there that's a trauma that you have to experience there's a trauma and i didn't know i was going to take 43 minutes on this message but there's we all as is just living in this world alone you ain't got to go through you don't have to go through any traumas as a child but just living here on this planet earth you're going to experience some type of trauma in your youth or in your adult life too there's people out there that are unhealed and they are being used by the enemy to come into your life to be a distraction to throw you off and to hurt you the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy and they use the most attractive people out there to do it with. And how you'll know, how you'll know is that they'll have some type of addiction that they can't let go of. And they will hurt the mess out of you. And it's meant to kill you. It's meant to destroy you. It's meant to destroy your spirit more than killing your flesh. Because... That's another thing. We allow our flesh to guide us into situations that's trying to kill us. That's a whole nother thing. I could probably go on forever, but I'm going to let this go. This was meant to be an encouragement to single moms that are, that are raising and rearing these children. I want you to go back over the span of 
one of your children if you have more than one and look at those old pictures and look at all the things that you've done as a mother to sacrifice and to give to those children and as long as you protected them you provided for them you clothed them you kept shelter over their head you are a good human being because there's so many people that can walk away from that including women there are some absentee mothers that can walk away there are but this is me saying for the one women that choose to stay and let me tell you this this is another thing that the world will try to make you feel bad about after after you reared and raised your kids and like me i've been a mother over 30 something years more than half my life uh the world will try to make you feel bad by like once you do have them all raised and you got them in college and you've gotten them to the finish line you start doing a little bit more for yourself you start caring for yourself doing doing a lot more self-care you start maybe being uh, able to afford some of the nicer things in certain aspects maybe you took in a little money aside or you've saved some money don't let nobody make you feel bad for how well you are to yourself how well you treat yourself you need to treat yourself and even if you're not in a position to do it put a little money aside how i treated myself when i was going through my single parentage uh, with my children i would treat myself on mondays i didn't have a lot of money at that time but i would say okay i was off on mondays i was off sundays and mondays so on mondays was my day because of course sundays was my my children my family's day but mondays was my day so i would take myself to the movies um get my favorite food buy myself flowers whatever that could cheer me up and make me happy go work out at the gym dance whatever like there are ways to treat yourselves while you're going through so this is me celebrating us single moms we're gonna make it through this thing we gonna we're gonna be smarter than we've ever been before because we're gonna study and show ourselves approved we're gonna pray to god to ask him to reveal the dysfunction that may be still within us the toxic traits so that he can help us heal those things we're gonna get our counseling because i guarantee you got to have some insurance uh there may be some places you can get some help without paying uh, but there are ways we can do to build ourselves and make ourselves a healthier, happier culture. And it all starts within. It all starts within. That's what that's what my channel is about, facing the reality of our humanity and actually dealing with it and becoming better people. Okay, I'm done. I, I don't think I've taken almost an hour in a long time. So this topic is extremely important for me, but it's going out to the single mom to let you know that you are far more valuable than rubies. And I want you to hold your head up. I don't care what space you're in in your life right now. You are still somebody special. You're still somebody's daughter. And I don't care. Your father couldn't have been there, but I know a father. I know a mighty father that loves you so much that he will bless you with the desires of your heart, but you gotta be healthy enough to be able to hold on to him. It's all about being healthy up here. It's all about being healthy in here and clean in your spirit. And you cannot do that holding on to toxic things and toxic people. You gotta let them fall off by the wayside. I say this year has been one of the loneliest years of my life because I've lost some beautiful people in my life this year and i've lost other things and um had to sever some connections with a couple people because i became their enemy just for no reason and that's another thing if all of a sudden you become somebody enemy after all you've done for them I've, the, and i'm not talking about merely financially i'm talking about loving them praying for them encouraging them pouring into them and then you turn around and do the same thing they're nowhere to be found those are not your people and you didn't lose a thing you know so you got to let those those connections be severed and and just let them go away and you got to know that you're going to attract better people people that are going to be there for the long haul because we're all going to go through trials and tribulations and this has been a, a year of a bunch of tribulations and trials but i'm still standing and it's because of God. And I know that he's ever so present. And whenever I get down on myself, because I, I can admit, I can be really hard on myself. Whenever I get down on myself, God will whisper in my ear a word of encouragement. Or he'll tell me to do something that's going to encourage me. And me going back, taking a retrospective look at 
how long I've been rearing and raising kids and all the sacrifices that I've made, he let me know that I am a wonderful mother. And even if my children doesn't think so, sometimes, you know, they get in their own ways and they know everything. I've only been here so, so many years, so I don't know nothing, right? But even when they get in their own ways and they make their own choices and, and decisions, I have to understand that I was that woman. I'm still that woman and I deserve to celebrate myself. I deserve respect and honor because I never left, never. And, and if I don't get credit for nothing else, I need to get credit for staying the course and staying faithful to God and, and doing the best that I could and, and making the best out of the situation that was given to me. So, no, I will not let nobody hold none of my past over my head. Actually, I tell my past so that I can help free somebody else. So, that don't even work. Because you can go get my book and find out everything about me. It's, it's not a secret. It's a testimony. It's meant to help encourage us out of our dysfunctions and to toxic traits. And we can do that. We can do that. We all can do that. Again, if you haven't done so, click and subscribe on my channel. I don't I don't like to bash people out. Even if I'm talking against our men. I love our men. They are our men, but they have to love themselves first. They have to go back and do their work and love themselves so that they can be healthy enough and whole enough to help us build our community and our society back up. Because I see examples of good households all the time and that gives me hope and faith. So, but we need the rest of us to participate as well. I'm done, I love you guys. Like always, I'm gonna always leave you with this. Love God, love yourself and love the people around you. And if you choose not to love the people around you, at least don't hurt them. Take care. I love you guys. Bye-bye.